Did you know that you can watch many of your favorite GLC programs all in one place for free? Just go online at www.glc.us.com and click on the GLC Teachers tab at the top of the homepage. From there you can scroll through dozens of quality GLC video archives containing over 100 full-length programs, updated weekly, and covering topics from Bible teachings and current events to scriptural, financial, and personal health. We've got it all covered at www.glc.us.com, so don't delay, start watching for free today. GLC presents a Studio B production brought to you by the donations of our faithful partners. Well, shalom and welcome again to our program on Wings of Truth. It is indeed a joy to be able to come uh, before you each week and bring you various types of teachings. Uh, this week we're going to start a new series. Um, because our program is still relatively new, we've only did four programs so far. Uh, before I began going in dealing with uh, books of the Bible, ultimately what the Lord had spoken to me and directed me to do in reference to these programs was to bring a classroom setting to you. Uh, in other words, I teach in a university. I have students that come from all parts of the country and some from Africa and Korea and different parts of the world, and they take courses with me and pay very large, large amounts of money. And uh, they sit with me for periods of 16 weeks hearing the lectures as I lecture on various things, and then they learn about that particular subject. Well, the Lord began to deal with me about bringing that same type of teaching and putting it on the airway where people in their homes can begin to get educational learning. Whereas that they're learning things that they would get if they were actually coming to a university and studying with me in a graduate program. We have opened up our programs by primarily dealing with word themes, word Subjects. In other words, we started out talking about the concept of worry because, first of all, before you can begin to go in and understand the nuances of what God's word is creating, you need a foundation. Much of what we hear being spoken and taught in different arenas today, we hear messages that tell us to do this and tell us to do that, but we don't hear how to build a foundation that is rooted and grounded in truth. And the truth that we're basing our knowledge upon is the Hebrew Bible, is the Jewish culture, is the Jewish setting. And so now in these earlier programs, what we're doing is taking some foundational truths and presenting them to you so that once you have a solid knowledge of how things work, then you can go into the rest of the Bible and begin to glean from it the nuggets and the truths that God has already placed within the word of God. I think that is a far better pattern than for me to go in and start teaching from the book of Better She, the book of Genesis, and talking to you about a lot of things that is happening in the creative order of the text and not be able to understand the meanings of the words. And so a lot of times our ability to advance and our ability to see the principles of God manifest in our lives begin with just simply understanding words. And I know that to be true. Every semester, at the beginning of the fall semester, as I'm getting new students coming in, signing up to take courses with me, and I start out by asking them primary words, asking them to define primary words. I tell them, I say, you think you know the answer to these questions, and yet you do not. For instance, this subject is going to be, uh, these series of teaching is going to be focusing on the Hebrew meaning of the word faith. And uh, we're going to define the word faith. So first of all, you, you, while uh, hopefully you've got your Bibles out and you got a pen, you're ready to start taking down notes. I'm going to ask you to define the English word 
faith. All I want you to do is to give me a simple definition of the word faith. And now I, I'm saying this to you because you see, I, I travel around the country for many years teaching on this subject. And, and, and I've been in large churches, small churches, small groups. And in every situation, every time that I've been out and I asked that question, I have absolutely had no one to give me the correct answer. Now, we could say that that's really sad. And, and you would probably be sitting there thinking to yourself right now, well, surely I know what the answer is because You've already thought Hebrews 11, 1, haven't you? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I didn't ask, I, what I asked you to do was to give me a definition of the word. Define the word faith. And, and you see, when you take me to the scriptures in Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. You're telling me what it is, but you're, you're not really defining the word. But if you think that's a definition of the word, let me ask you this. Can you tell me what the substance is, defines what substance is? If faith is the substance, define what the substance is. Do you see what happens is at this point when I'm asking this question, the students, the congregation begins to go into a circle. Because they will ultimately say faith is the substance. Well, if faith is a substance, what is faith? Faith is substance. You see, you go in a circle, one to another. We don't know what the, we really don't know what the substance is, and we really don't know how to define the word faith. You see, I, I can remember many years ago in my own life with my family, um, back in the uh, 70s, mid 70s. Uh, various faith, faith movements were popping up all around the country. And I would get in the car and drive my family hundreds of miles to go hear one faith teacher talk about it. And all I wanted to know was what was faith. Because you see, ultimately, I kept saying over and over to myself, I don't have faith. Because it wasn't working in my life in the manner in which I thought it was working in someone else's life. And so I kept wondering, what in the world does the word mean? No one, well, you may hear that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You, is that what faith is? Is that what, what you, how you define the word? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You're giving me Bible scripture, but you're not giving me a definition of the word. And you see, as a Bible student studying, learning to be a scholar, I began to see the importance of learning the definition of words. Now, this word faith, when I look at the word from the Hebrew perspective, as it appears in a Hebrew text, it is the Hebrew word emunah, emunah. And now I need to know what this word means based upon the Hebrew word emunah. Because you see, the Greek word for faith, is the Greek word pistis, or in the plural pistol. And if you look up in a uh, buyer's Greek lexicon uh, to define the word, it basically means believe. So is that all that faith is? Belief. Well, the Hebrew word, when I look the word up in the Hebrew scriptures, as I said, it tells me that the word is imunah. And it comes from three root stem letters or three consonants. We have the olive, the mem, and uh, the noon, imuna. And in looking up this word faith, let me turn to my Hebrew text here, and um, I can better illustrate the meaning of faith. Aleph, Mem, Nun, Emuna. Uh, one of the scriptures that I was teaching from last program in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 25, but down in chapter, uh, down in verse, uh, where is it at? Verse 
30, Jesus says, O ye of little faith. And, and I pull it up, pull the same text up here in the uh, 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 Hebrew text. It says, Kanane imuna. Kanane, a kanan from the word little, and ha imuna, with the definite article being used on it, on the word. If you have what is called a Hebrew lexicon, uh, some may use what is called strong concordance, but I'm not too big on using strong because strong is not the best of lexicals. Text, but one by the name of Brown Driver Briggs, Hebrew lexicon. If you look the word emunah up in Brown Driver Briggs, the definition of the word is steady. Steady or steadfastness. Imuna is defined as certainty. It is defined as established. It is defined as trust and obey. And that's the definition of the word faith from the Hebrew scriptures. Why is it important to, to look at the Hebrew scriptures? Because Jesus is quoting it from the New Testament. Well, I also teach that it is impossible to understand the New Testament without first understanding the Old Testament or the Hebrew scriptures. And so the concept of faith that Jesus is teaching, he's drawing that concept from the Hebrew scriptures. Jesus, as you well know, didn't teach from the Gospels. They weren't even written, written at that time. So we have Jesus teaching, using, and referring back to the text in the Hebrew Scriptures. So if he uses the term faith, imunah, he's speaking of a word that has its origin in the Hebrew Scriptures. Again, the word is defined as steady or steadfastness, firmness, certainty, trust and obey. Whatever this word is, when I looked at it from the Hebrew word and got the Hebrew definition in English, it told me something different than what I had ever seen before. Because you see, when I look at faith based upon my years of hearing it taught from various ministries across our country. Faith is taught in the form of a logical thought or a logical act. Faith is some type of mysterious power or something that somehow or another just empowers us to become more than who we are, super beings. It reminds me of that little game that was invented many years ago with the, the guy going around being turned into a superpower. Well, somehow or another, we want to get faith going to just drop in and now all of a sudden we're going to be transformed over into this great, powerful man of God. And, and so most of us are still walking around waiting and looking for faith to start manifesting in our lives. What in the world does the word mean? I just said to you, Hebrews 11, 1 is not the definition of the word. Because when I say that the word means steady, then in Hebrews 11, 1, it says now faith is a substance. We'll come back to that element as we go on because we're going to pa package this word in such a way that I believe that when you reapply the true meaning of the word faith, to Hebrews 11.1, 1, it may make the hair on the back of your neck curl up. It may make you want to jump up and shout. Because you see, what we're going to do is we're going to package this word in such a way that you're going to understand what faith is and you're going to understand what is required of you and how to walk and have faith. It's not that difficult. The problem is, is that, as I said, it seems that nobody wants to go back and define the word. We keep telling people to have faith. I remember just uh, several weeks ago, I, I, I started to write down 
the many different ways in which people say faith or say something in reference to faith. And, and, and I thought, we don't know what we're talking about. We say things like, stretch out your faith, send forth your faith, the eye of faith, the ear of faith, the faith walk. What in the world are we talking about? Stretching out your faith. You see, I used to be out there and someone says, stretch your faith out. And so I'm trying to stretch out something that I don't know is happening. Truly, I'm stretching my hands out, but am I really sending faith out? I'm not sending faith out because I don't know what I'm doing. And so many of us are out there in the same manner, in the same pattern that I was many years ago. We flat out just didn't know what we were doing. And it's not going to begin to become real unto you until you can begin to define the word, understand what it means, and then how it applies to you based upon how it was applied in biblical texts. Glory to God. Do you know we're going to go back and look at the scriptures and begin to see how faith is lived out in the lives of people. And, and based upon the definition, illustrate to you what they were doing that constituted faith so that you can begin to extract from that lesson rules and principles that would allow you to start walking and living and having faith in your life today as well. This is, these are going to be some important teachings on the subject of faith. Amen. Glory to God. So when I did, first did this study of the word faith, and I saw that one of the first meanings of the Hebrew word imunah was steady. I needed to see faith in operation based upon scripture. And in according to the BDB, which is Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew lexicon, the first use of the word emunah in the Bible is found in Exodus chapter 17. In Exodus chapter 17, we have this unique narrative concerning Moses. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 12, the Israelites are in a fierce battle with the Amalekites, and their victory depended upon an act that Moses was going to do. And so here we find in the text, the text says, but Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and placed it under him. And he sat thereon and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands became, or his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And when the Israelites looked upon Moses' hands being held steady, they were victorious in the battle. Do you see that in your Bible? You see the word steady? It says, and, and his hands were steady. Now, when I started studying Hebrew many years ago, back around 1981, learning to read Hebrew for myself. Once I had learned the phonetics of the alphabets, I could actually go and take a Hebrew text and look through a Hebrew text and begin to find words. I may not have known how to read the text to understand what was being spoken of or recorded in the text, but at least I had the ability to go back and look through the text to see the actual meanings of the words. And so I was able to co take this Hebrew text. This is my uh, biblical Hebraica text, uh, the Tanakh, uh, uh, Netivin, and Katavin. This is my Hebrew text that I'm looking at in chapter 17 and verse number 12. Uh, I won't read all of the text for you. Just find the section right at the very end. It says... Uh, Yadav emuna al bo ha shemesh. Again, Yadav, which is his hands, emuna, 
which we say steady, but we also use it as the word faith, ad bo until the coming of Hashemish, the sun, until the going down of the sun. And, and so here's the Hebrew word that we translate as faith in a, in, a, in a passage of text that simply means steady. I remember when I first saw that study. I did this study. I'm telling you, it has to be over almost 20 years ago. And, and I saw that the word faith had something to do with me being steady. And, and the minute that that little light began to be turned on inside of my heart, I began to realize that's the one thing that I'm not doing. I'm not being steady in how I walk before the Lord. I, I didn't know how to practically apply it, how to extract from the text what was being said in reference to the Amalek's and, the, and Moses in this battle at that moment. But I did know one thing. There was no steadiness in me at all. And somehow or another, God was quickening in my spirit, whatever faith is and whatever it has to do with in for, insofar as this walk that I have with God, I've got to begin to learn to become steady. And I think that you're hearing this as well. You've got to learn how to be steady in your walk before God. But let's extract more of what is being taught here in reference to these texts. Remember just a moment ago, I said that the children of Israel were in a fierce battle against the Amaleks. And when Moses' hands were held up, they, they, they prevailed in the battle. But when his hands became heavy and fell down to his side, the Amaleks prevailed in the battle. And, and, and then it says that Aaron and Herb came and stayed up his hands and his hand became steady and victory was, was there before them. And, and so I started saying to the Lord, come on, God, you, you got to teach me the practical meaning of these scriptures because I truly need to know what faith means. And, and so the spirit began to witness to my heart. You, you see, I want you to understand and follow this as we go through this journey together. Because you have a spirit just like I have a spirit. The Holy Spirit has come to live and abide in, and to dwell inside of us. And you see, Jesus has already said that the spirit that is going to come and to dwell in you as the comforter, that spirit will make known all the things that are the Father. That spirit will teach you all the things that is of God. And, and so you've got to begin to rely upon God's spirit to begin to quicken into you understanding. At the moment that I was looking at this text, I had no idea how to practically apply it to my life. And then all of a sudden, the spirit began to show me that I, too, was going through fierce battles. They may not have been physical battles as Israel was going through a physical battle. I was going through spiritual battles where the enemy was getting victory and whooping me and winning in all of the areas of my life. And I needed to find some stability in my life to have victory over the one who was having victory over me. And here in this story, their victory was dependent upon Moses' hands being steady. And all of a sudden I saw, whatever this faith is, it has something to do with me learning how to be steady in my walk before God. Because as I said, in every battle that I went through, every spiritual battle that was going on within my life, there was no stability there. Amen? So first of all, we establish a premise of understanding. And if we can establish a premise of understanding, which I usually call foundation. If I can get my foundation dug deep enough, and, and, and plant it and get the root of it planted good inside of me, then I'm going to be able to implement that which is of God and walk in it to some degree of success. I, I think you can see that and, and, and recognize the significance of it for yourself as well. The Israelites were steady or, or victorious because of the steadiness of Moses' hands. And as Moses' hands were held steady, then they prevail in the battle. Now, what were the other words that I defined? Firmness, certainty, establish, trust, and obey are the root meanings of the word emunah. Emunah is spelled E 
E N or E M N U H. Was that right? M U E M U N A H. M U N A. And again, this word in the Hebrew meaning in the English Bible has the connotations of being firm and certain and steadfast. Now, when we come back in our next program, we're going to go over and look at some practical applications based upon how the word is being lived out in the lives of, again, the Israelite people. And this time we're going to go to the book of Daniel. And in the book of Daniel, we're going to look at a situation and a story there that I believe will just absolutely cause your heart to go ablaze. And it will bring clarity and understanding as to how you can begin to implement and walk in operation in this concept called faith. Faith is not just belief. It's much, much more than that. It has something to do with you becoming immovable. You see, that uh, is what you are not doing. Because Christ, the word says that the double-minded person can have nothing. But you've got to learn how to become immovable in God's word. You've got to learn how to plant yourself in a position of firmness where you will not waver to any side. Where, where once you take that position, you're not going to yield or change on what God's word says to you no matter what circumstances happen or happening in your life. And we're going to talk about some of these things because that's generally what happens to us when we're trying to have faith. Life circumstances come in like a flood and begin to shift us back and forth. And, and you see, we become just like the uh, elements of life, wavering back and forth, not knowing which direction to go in and never having any stability that constitutes faith in our lives. Amen. Well, as we come back into our next program, we're going to pick up on this and share more with you about it. I'm very pleased that you're joining us and uh, hope that you've learned something from this opening teaching on the subject of faith. Amen. Shalom. We hope that you're enjoying our YouTube series, GLC Essentials. GLC Essentials takes you back to some of the very first programs from our most beloved teachers in their original full-length formats. Available at no cost. Feel free to visit our website at glc.us.com where you can watch free new shows from our entire program lineup. You can also watch GLC 24 hours a day through our live stream located on the homepage. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and, as always, please thumbs up this video. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus through the information on your screen. Thank you and God bless.